It's been one week since the last of tea. Podcast, but who is really counting? It's not like I don't have a laugh. I mean, I just like those guys that bring us on the beat. How's it going? It's the uh, <laughs> the wannabe bare naked ladies podcast today. I want to hear pulling cords like right before we start. <laughs> yeah. Just like yanking, Started yanking stuff. trying to get any bit of slack that I can out of it. There's no slack. Hi Gus. How you doing? Hi Joel. Hi. How are you? How hey are Jack, you? what's up, man? <laughs> <How are> you? <laughs> got quiet there for a second. I got nervous. So Jeff and Griffin are uh, they're in Chicago this Chicago. week, right? Yes. Celebrating they're... Jeff's birthday. Yes. And their, and their anniversary. I think their anniversary is like the day before his birthday. Is it really? And Father's so. Day. All at the same time. Three, three for one. It's the trifecta of gift giving. Mm-hmm. It's like, Jeff's going to get screwed, right? I yeah, mean, he exactly. should have gotten three gifts. I'm exactly. sure he got one. Let me tell you something. As, as a dad, the way it works out, though, you're just... I mean, you guys remember your dad when you were growing yeah. up for holidays? It's yeah. like, you're not part of the equation. So it actually works out very well in Jeff's favor that he has everything all in one day. Yeah. You know? so I mean, a, you know what I did for my father's for Father's Day is I did not call him. <laughs> is that that's true? pretty much what he would. That's that, that's probably cool with him. That was he wanted peace and quiet. Him. Wow. Yeah. That's sweet. He, that's, he just wants this, this quiet. How how often do you call your parents? V- rare, rarely. Like, like come on, like give me an average. Like every other month. Every other month. So once wow. every two months. Yeah. Jack, what about you? Probably about once a week at least. Really, and they live in Austin. They live in Austin. Okay. I call my mom like once a week and my dad like twice a year. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, would, I wouldn't have pegged you as calling your mom once a week. I wouldn't at all. Yeah, me neither. All right, well, I, I'm sensitive, okay? <laughs> I've got a real heart in here. No, really. I mean, do you make the call or does she make the call? Uh, either way. Really? Yeah. No, nah, yeah. I talk to my parents. I'm like, I'm like Joel. Maybe once a month, maybe once every two months. The well, way where are your parents at? North Carolina. Okay. How, how often do you talk to your siblings? As little as possible. <laughs> I actually, when I talk to my brother, I do very little talking. He talks the entire time, and I go, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. If you ever wonder why I can't pay attention to people for more than like four minutes in a row, spend about half a day with me and my brother. You will not wonder why that is anymore. Because yeah. I spent 18 years with. It's him. amazing when families get together, like especially with like siblings. It like turns in. You see a whole other side of people. That it's just like, oh, you are a person or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like this is what's wrong with you. It's like your <laughs> your siblings are engineered to drive you crazy. Yeah, pretty much. They, I mean, just well, they've helped you develop all those buttons that other people can push when you're an adult. Like yeah, they've given you all those all those weird psychosis. Yeah, so you've got a brother and you've got a brother. Gus, do you have a brother? I have one bi- fully biological sister. Okay. I'm right. So I'm the same one. All, all, all girls in your family except for you. Isn't that uh, the way it is? I've got some adopted brother, stepbrothers. You seem, this seems nebulous. Like you're not <laughs> sure exactly what it's your family a, it, is. This, it, it, there's a lot of classifications. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What? Just a lot of distinctions. It's like there's... There, there's some that are adopted, some that are step, and okay. some that are biological. Okay. I think there was a Saturday morning... Show about that. <laughs> really? Like after Saved by the Bell, there was one. It was like a family. <laughs> like just the ten of us, right? Like that's how it was like a just blonde. Just the ten of us kid. plus two. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I don't know. The, the Sorolas on after Gargoyles. Man, that glass of water is freaking me out, Bernie. What's that? It's a very large glass of water, and your laptop's right next to it. And just, yeah. It's you know, a, look at that. <laughs> it is how I get new laptops, though, is by, I have liquid. Did, did I ever tell you what happened to my Sony laptop I used to you have? the Griffin Technique? Where it's like, oh, I spilled, how'd water get in it? I don't know. Well, he, it was because the Sony, probably because it had a Sony battery, which lit on fire, which is why you want to keep a cup of water. <laughs> Sony, so it got hacked <laughs> instantly. No, I was, there was a Dr. Pepper that I had in the old, in the Buda office. And put the Dr. Pepper down, just a normal, like, 16-ounce bottle, plastic bottle. I leave the room. I come back. Somehow, the bottle is tipped over. And the end of the spout is right in the center of the keyboard. <laughs> and it's like glug, 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 just pouring Dr. Pepper into my keyboard. And I lift it up like, oh, God, I lift it up and do this. And like it's just draining Dr. Pepper and I'm shaking it like that. And surprisingly, it worked for about five minutes. Like I started to transfer big it, stuff off of it. It gives you just it. enough to like, oh, oh, man, man there's hope, oh, oh. But no. 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 And then spark, it's like, zap. It's like the sugary water started like becoming more sticky and adhesive, gluing your hard drive together. I don't know what it is. Like I don't know what is the thing – in the laptop that it reaches and then when it once it gets there that's it zap and it's just that's it's dead because mm-hmm. it must reach other stuff first yeah there's got to be like some some point yeah. that it fries out it's like if you yeah it's like it, if you it, were it, training it, martial arts to kill a computer where yeah. would you strike it's, like, it's thirst where the satisfied death, where are the death we, points we were at uh, that oh, that uh, computer store the other day and they had that keyboard the indestructible keyboard oh, it right. was like rubber or whatever and it fold over or whatever it's like i want everything made out of that <laughs> Everything should be made out of that keyboard. You should never call anything indestructible, though, because someone will destruct it. Yeah. Well, it's no practically practice. indestructible. There's I, a video like that online, right? You ever see that one with the indestructible phone? 
Oh, oh right. Yeah, the guy was demoing it. He was demoing it, it, was it at a, a sales convention. Demo. And he just goes, he goes, it's indestructible. Pop, pop, smash. <laughs> and he like, very little effort, he smashes the phone. It's so, like, it's always there. Oh, that's never happened. So I, have a, I have a story about spilling stuff into keyboards. I worked at a radio station one time for about two years. And uh, I don't drink coffee. This is one of the reasons why I don't drink coffee. But I don't drink coffee ever. And what radio th- station did you work at? I worked at a, a like local, an FM station, an AM station. I worked okay. at uh, 1530, which do you, was awesome. Do you do the weather? Texas conservative voice, more more so than usual. Ugh. Christian, you sound no. like you could be the announcer on a Texas conservative. I, actually, voice. I, I had we, ha- we had a show on there. I was I did a movie show for about three months, but there's a whole <clears> messed up story with that. Anyway, uh, so this guy I worked with, it was in the same station that, like, there was a couple other stations. There's, like, a rap station, like, an alternative station. All were in the same offices. And uh, this guy I worked with, he's like, you don't drink coffee? I was like, no. He's like, well, let me make you coffee that I know you'll like. So he made this coffee that was, like, incredibly sugary. Like, he just poured tons of, like, creamer and sugar into it. And so it was loaded up with sugar. I'm listening. I put it on my, on, on like, the, the, the console, turned my chair, the arm hit it and spilled it right into the console. Wow. Like, this giant, like, you know, tw- like, 20 or 30 slider console went right in. Stuff started sparking. And then just this loud noise started screaming from my studio. And this was right before we had guests coming in to, like, record the next show. I was like, well, so you weren't live on the air, but well, it was, we were broadcasting, but it was a recorded broadcast at the time. And then we had a live show coming in like the next hour. And so like I'm sitting there and this noise is just screaming from the from my studio with over the speakers. And then what do you mean? What's you know, screaming? The, the just device? Like a loud squeal. Oh, yeah. That was broadcasting over the radio. And uh, thankfully, no one listened to that station. But uh, yeah, eventually, <laughs> eventually, like I started prying out the sliders, and just like coffee was everywhere. I had to call up a manager. It was like nine a.m. on a Sunday morning, and I had to call these guys up and be like, "Yeah, I fried your studio. I'm sorry." I, I literally started just packing up my stuff. I'm like, "Well, this is it." And they didn't fire me. Really? I don't know why they didn't fire me, but I left about maybe six months later to go on. I think I went to H-E-B. <laughs> they, were, they were docking all of your pay to pay for the fucking expensive equipment. God. It wasn't worth it anymore. I was just sitting there. It's like, I mean, I literally took everything I had with me home that day. I was like, well, I'm not coming. I'm nev- never, ever coming back. So how expensive a piece of equipment was this thing? Did you ever figure that out? It, probably 20000 or so. Oh, my God. I mean, it was, it was the old, like, they, there's four different studios, and this was the oldest one, but it was one that, you know, it's still very expensive, especially when, like, they bought it back in the day, but... Yeah. Well, they had a twenty thousand piece of you know dollar piece of equipment. Things that seems like there'd be rules or oh yeah, like but you duct know. tape or well caution. It was nine a.m. on a Sunday morning. No one gives a crap. They would have wrapped it in plastic. <laughs> they have made it indestructible out of rubber. You can bend it and stuff. Or just no drinks. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing you do. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, <laughs> sure I'm sure after that hey, they instituted that. So jackass, no uh, frappuccino. See, everything everything starts out fun until Sorry. some guy spills yeah. stuff on. Anyway, no more coffee. I never rules. drink coffee. It is. It's always one person who fucks it up. I remember when I was a kid, we could not get action figures that would fire a missile because some fucking kid shot a missile down his throat. I bet that kid doesn't even exist. I bet it was like before the internet and they heard about this kid and it just became urban legend that some kid fired a fucking missile down his throat, a little plastic missile, and died. And so now no kid can have a product that fires missiles. How do we have firecrackers then? What's that? How do we have firecrackers still? I mean... I I don't know how we figured out anything back in those days. You know, it was just like some kid who's at another school district did this thing. Well, it's like, how did information even get passed? It's like we talked about, like, how did people know to blow, like, Nintendo carts? Everybody knew to do that. Yeah. Everybody knows you blow on it, right? We talked about this on the podcast yeah, before. How, the, how did that information spread? I'd like to see somebody study that, that every kid in America knew you had it, to blow on your Nintendo. It's like watching a virus outbreak. I want to see that superimposed <laughs> over a map and the information spreading. You know, I want to I want to become I want to get the marketing that Nintendo gets because you think about that Nintendo console, they all failed. Like they <laughs> all of them. It was a hundred percent failure rate. If you had a Nintendo <laughs> NES, eventually that thing failed. It was a cartridge that you stuck in and then you push down. You could hear like a spring go <laughs> as you push it down in and it would click, right? I don't know anybody. Did anybody here have a Nintendo that didn't eventually fail at some point? No, my, I had one that didn't didn't, didn't fail. So you're the one that didn't fail. Yeah. So okay. So there's you never the had one. to blow in the cartridge. You never had to put the quarters maybe on. Well, top? I do remember blowing in a well, cartridge. Well, there you go. But, well, there you go. <laughs> but I mean, it yeah, worked. I, I mean, it worked. Like sitting there pushing on it over and over and yeah, hitting the off, pa- power. Yeah. I mean, by, <laughs> by the time it got to me, I must have already because it never failed, so I never had to blow it to me. You know. 
That's a terrible. But like when a, I'm saying, when a product <laughs> fails now, when you have this massive failure rate for a hardware product, everybody screams and goes nuts. Yeah. But this Nintendo thing is like this cultural touchstone. It's like ah, blow on it, haha. It's funny. Remember when we were kids and we had to do the what, push and the, what was the deal with the with the red ring and like you get a towel when you get oh, the towel yeah, and yeah, put yeah. in a microwave yeah. or something yeah. like that. Well, the deal with the that that you know what that solution was. What they were trying to do. So apparently, what happened, what would cause the red ring is as the 360, the original 360s would heat up. There was some soldering in there that was had a melting point. I don't know if that's the right word for soldering, but below the temperature of the in, inside of the box, so it would melt, and that solder would go out of place. So then people would wrap it in a towel to reheat the box back up, remelt that solder, and who, try to shake who, it back. Who's the guy? Who's the place? guy who came up with this? Who's the guy who figured this out? Desperate it, people. It was, like it was a, never a, a long term solution, though. I mean, like, yeah, that would work right, for, for a week, right? For a little while. It's probably a guy saw Total it, it would, Recall. It would work long then, enough <laughs> for you to sell it on Craigslist and get a new one. I, I, I had a TiVo that went bad, and uh, I just cracked it open to see what was going on, and sure enough, there was solder all over. Like, really? It was melted all over the place. Oh, yeah? yeah. And so I broke it free or whatever. I, I was never able to totally fix it, but. It is actually surprising when you go to look for furniture, the number of entertainment consoles, those cabinets where you put all your stuff. It's surprising how few of them have fans in them mm-hmm. to just circulate air through. Or any type of ventilation. Yeah. At all. Yeah, like the, most of them will have like a closed front and maybe a tiny hole in the back for your cables to go. And yeah. a door. I, I mean, who? Yeah. Like, it yeah. seems like that would be such an easy market where it's like, well, this is revolution. We're going to make cabinets. And in the back, there's going to be holes for the cables. <laughs> okay, maybe it's like, I have a time with you looking no, yeah. for this. It's like you can't find it anywhere. It's like the ones that do have the cable doesn't make like, oh, there's holes, but the the cord doesn't fit through. The plug isn't, it's not big enough for the plug. Right. If you yeah. jam What's it going through on? there, how, how then you're fine. It? Yeah. yeah. I, it just, it just boggles the mind. All I got to say is thank God for HDMI because that has ridiculously oh, yeah, simplified yeah. that oh, yeah. process. Well, I, I, when I we get to component cables, you had to jam five, oh, yeah. five cords to that one hole. Yeah. And who's the fucking idiot? That made red the color for two different jacks <laughs> on that. Doing two different things. Yeah, Doing one, two one's different things. Audio, one's video. And how many times have you, how many people have gone to their parents' house and they're watching a TV with no red on it and this crackling coming out of the speaker? Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't Jeff capture some video like that a couple of weeks ago? I think he was working on some Achievement Hunter stuff and after he was on capture, he's like, oh, that's weird. There's no red in this. <laughs> when, I was, uh, when I was at UT, Time Warner came out and gave us like 60 inch monitors for a public event we were doing. And one of their techs switched up the red audio and the red video component cable, like a Time Warner tech employee. I mean, I want to make fun of the guy, but they're both red, you know? And by the way, you should probably explain what TSTV is. Because no one's going to know what the hell TSTV is. Did I say TSTV? When we were in college, the the radio station we had, we had a video game show. So we did a big event on the main mall. He just turned a TV station into a radio station. I'm not sure how he did that. Yeah, he said radio station. Wasn't expecting that question. Well, TSTV was, that's actually how I know Brandon, is because TSTV was Texas Student Television, which is UT's student-run television station. I think it's like one of the, it was, when I was there, it was the only 24-hour all-student-run station in the world, and then we had all these things, like we first broadcast on the internet and all that stuff, and then I met Brandon, because Brandon was the station manager, like, many years later. Decades was, later, right? Like, yeah, well, <laughs> let's, let's just say it was some time later, Brandon became station manager. 30 years. And he would call me and bug me to write checks to donate, which I never knew what you did with those. I hope you spent them on something nice. He bought a nice shirt with it. It's a nice yeah, sh- really? You bought a yeah. lavender shirt. You bought a giant antenna, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, Bernie, nice. Bernie was kind enough to donate to that cause. Well, we bought, the, we bought an antenna. You bought the bigger antenna, right? It's huge. I guess our antenna wasn't digital. It was a digital one. Our antenna. It's like SimCity. Like you bought one antenna, then like a little while later you have to upgrade it to a bigger. You know you're gonna have to upgrade it when you buy it. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. that's gonna show up and knock it down. Have to get a new one. (laughs) Bernie was pretty cool. I had a tooth and claw for most of the cash we got. Most of the stuff we got was like thirty dollar donations. You were pretty. Bernie was a little bit more generous. I like TSTV. Plus we met Brandon. I mean that's good, right? Jack, you want to weigh in on this issue? (laughs) Me and Brandon. (laughs) No comment. <laughs> Before we get too far away, can I say something else about Nintendo? Yes. Why I want to have their PR Maybe. mystique or whatever the fuck they have. You go to, like, we just got done with E3, right? And one of the biggest complaints is that you always hear is like, oh, everything's sequels. You know, this is sequel, that's a sequel. I'll say, Nintendo has four fucking games. <laughs> they do. And they just make the same four games over and over again, and everybody loves it. And they can't get enough of it. And it's like, oh, here's another $400 platform to play the same four games again. What was the last original Nintendo game that came out? I that don't know. Of? I don't know. I, I would have to say Wii Sports? Probably. And even then, it's just a sports game. Yes. Yeah. They didn't do anything. I can't think of anything. Because it's, it's, Zel- it's, it's Zelda, it's Mario, Metroid, Metroid, 
and you can say Smash Brothers now. At that I point. guess Smash but, Brothers. Yeah, at that point. But that's, uh, but you know, po- Pokemon and everyone's yeah, different. Pokemon. Everyone play. Everyone plays whatever their two or three Nintendo games they play, and they pay about five hundred bucks every four years to play them again. The new and, version. Yeah, or now it's like on the the three DS. They got this Ocarina of Time, which somehow I missed that whole like sixty four mm-hmm. Nintendo sixty four era of Zelda games. And apparently that was like the greatest gaming experience of all time, but I've never played any of those games. Well, maybe now's the time. Now that it's on the 3DS? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's one of those... Time to rebuy it. I think it's one of those nostalgia things that it, you can't buy into somebody else's nostalgia. Yeah. I'll play it. I'm like, this is garbage. How long do you think handheld gaming has left? Like, um, the, like PS Vita came out. Are you including 3DS. masturbation? Because that, <laughs> that can really up the longevity. I should say uh, digital gaming. I don't know how... I don't think the PS Vita is going to do well. I, it looks cool, but I don't think it'll do well. I think either. I think I think handheld gaming will do well, but it's going to be on your phone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that I, was, I was just about to pull up my iPhone and yeah, go. The, the iPhone is has killed all. Yeah, I mean the three DS. So well, I mean, it is portable gaming, right? Yeah, and it's in a lot of ways it's bigger than everything else. Yeah, we just yeah. don't realize the it games yet. are cheaper. You can get it whenever you want. You don't have to go to the store. It's yep. like the PSP Go, but good. Well, it's interesting though. The the new Wii console is introducing a whole new level of handheld gaming too. It's like you oh, play all your Wii games with the Wii handheld control, the giant Game Gear, basically. You mean playing, playing your Wii with an iPad, essentially? Did you see, speaking hey. of which, did you see iOS 5 is actually going to have something similar to that? When it comes out, they're going to have gaming on the iPad that interacts with your Apple TV. So you can pipe, like for example, a racing game. You can pipe the racing game from your iPad to your TV, use the iPad as a steering wheel, and have like your tachometer and speedometer on the iPad, but the actual view of the the driving game on your TV. That's pretty cool. Basically, really? Yeah. They're racing games right now for the iPad, but you have to actually watch the screen as you turn, so it's yeah. like... Oh, that makes sense. So it doesn't, like, rotate? Yeah, match. you're, like, rotating your head to match so you can see what the fuck's going on. Yeah, it kind of stinks. Scare. Yeah. No, with, with iOS 5, they're going to they're gonna be Wii U before Wii U comes out. Still, though, I mean, it does boil down to that's a $600 controller. It's nice if you have one, yeah. but if you don't, I mean, what are you going to do? Gonna, it's, it's hey, my buddies want to come over. Let's spend 2400 bucks so we can play four players. It's a $600 player. controller, plus you need a $100 Apple TV as well. We just had a $40,000 land party. <laughs> <laughs> that was a stupid shirt. It was awesome. You know the Wii U only has one of those controllers. Yeah. there's not. It's not four of those controllers, like the fancy controllers. There's only one. Per console. One per console. Really? Yeah. Start some fights. That they, comes with it or it's compatible? No, no that, that plays with it. You'll only be able to put one at a time. They said they'll look into it and maybe they'll be able to do a second one, but they think it's only going to be one per console. Makes sense to me. One controller. You know, there's only five games, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just take turns. Eventually, you'll get through everything. Yeah, that seems like a good thing. Would you want four of those damn things around your house? Just like no. lying everywhere. I mean, that's thanks what I, for asking. I don't want more stuff in my house. <laughs> that's why it's like all the peripherals that come out. I'm just no thanks. Yeah. In fact, I, feel the same way. I, I saw a uh, presentation at South by Southwest for a game that was totally geared towards using the drum set that everyone has for Rock Band, but it wasn't a music game. You, you, they had invented some other, like, That's some cool. kind of adventure action game That's that cool. used the drum set because it's like. Well, people have these things and they're not using them. Yeah, that's they might cool. as well try to capitalize on that. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. The Pretty video, smart idea, right? The video game company I worked at before, someone pitched us one time, where it was similar to that, where it was the, the guitar, like a Guitar Hero guitar to do like an action game type thing. That's cool. I like repurposing yeah. hardware. Absolutely. I don't. The, I like the, throwing the, that the, shit away. Well, no, the, <laughs> the thing is, the first time I set eyes on a lot of that stuff, it's like, well, here's some plastic crap that you're going to buy and then look at for six months or a year or whatever and then it's just that's it well, the worst was when thing. more came out like when new ones came out it's like do I really need another fake plastic drum yeah, set I, I've already got one fake plastic drum set you know gathering <laughs> dust in my closet yeah, I don't need a second one symbols too so you know what actually I don't know if we've ever talked about this before but do you know that for a very short period of time maybe not that short Jack was the number one rated drummer on Rock Band in one mode in one mode in the world there was, a, there was a battle mode, and I was actually, I went undefeated for like 20 or 30 times. Wow. When the and game so first came was, out. Yeah, it was, it was one of the first posts I made on, on Rooster Teeth, actually. So I was, like, gonna the, be I was the, like the world leaderboard, I was number one. I've been... Remember you came to the office and you played. Yeah. That's also probably you got a first in the first time anyone was ever validated for something like that, <laughs> ever. Well, that well, was the thing, because I, like, for, like, when Guitar Hero came out, I caught on to it late, and all my friends were real badasses at it, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna like when these drums come out. I'm gonna get those and get really, really good at them. That's gonna be my thing, and that's exactly what I did. And so, and then I was number one for a while. I'm actually I've been number one on three different leaderboards on Xbox Live. Really? Like world leaderboards. One was on, one was for a game that wasn't out yet, so that I don't count that one essentially. But the other was for. Yeah, a, you're bringing um, it up. 
I know. Yeah, well, <laughs> one was for uh, Trials HD, which was a fantastic game, and I got like number one in the world on one track. And actually, I happened to be recording when I did it too, so you can link that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, well, but that, Trials is definitely one of those games, those time-based games where you can get a real score, and then eventually people figure out some weird, stupid glitch, and then everybody has a 1.5 second time to yeah, finish the that's thing. That's exactly what happened to me. I is was that, I was number it? one in the world. I think now I'm like a thousand. Marble Blast was like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I had some high times in Marble Blast. Real quick though, what was the highest leaderboard? score that you ever had well, on anything we have to take a quick break we'll, we'll, we'll get into that question think as soon as we come back wow that's a tease so think we'll about good it at this and we'll be right back Second sticks. all right welcome back so you're asking what's the highest we've ever been in the leaderboard in the history of playing on any global leaderboard what's the highest you ever got and in what game man joe looks like he has an answer I think I was two point seven million three. I've never finished. Really, you never anything. looked at it ever. I, I, it's so depressing to me. Oh yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. I think, like in Pac Man CE, I think I was like number fifty for a while on uh, one that's, of the that's modes. Good. That's impressive. Yeah. I remember yeah. that game. You guys playing that game? That was a hard game. It was, it was a good game. I think that's the highest I've ever been. But again, it's it's like I feel like it's a small subset yeah. of people that well, played that the, game. The third game yeah. I did was uh, Dishwasher Vampire Smile because we got early copies online. So that's the only reason why. But there was like I think twenty people were on the leaderboard at that time. But what it's a, still cool to see yourself number one and it's like world leaderboard number one. Like ah, it's a bright shining moment. It's what pretty sure. neat. What about you? Uh, I had some good times in Marble Blast Ultra, but the highest I ever got was I think I got all the way up to 23rd on the global leaderboard in the time survived in Dead Rising. That's oh, cool. Wow. Which was interesting just because I was like, I'm not even, I'm not going to go another day in this mall trying to survive. I'm just not going to do it. I just, by the time you got it, I was like, I'm out. It's, it's become a big problem with me now where it's like when I play video games, I'm just in a hurry. I just, I don't have time for anything anymore. And so yeah. it's just like, go, 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 go. And it's like a lot of times, like I was playing L.A. Noir or whatever. It's just like. Oh, you picked it up? I did. I finished it. And I thought it was a great game, but it's like, and this is a minor little thing, but it's in all games where it's just like, oh, when I go into this animation sequence, I got to wait that 1.7 seconds for it to go in or, and it's like, I don't want to wait that. I just want to go, you know, and it's you like mean loading the, times you don't like, you know, when you, like when you're going to inspect the body. So like when he's that, reaching it for goes the to door that door short animation where it's like, now I'm stepping over the body. I don't want to wait that time. I just want to go to the body. Let's you know, go, I, I haven't played the game, but I know what you're talking about. Sometimes they'll put in this, just this tiny short animation. But you got to do it a million times. On something that you do over and over yeah. again, and it drives you crazy. Like getting, like getting into the car. It's like, oh, I press Y. Now he's got to walk around to the other side of the car. I just want to go. And you can't I just, interrupt I just it. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Stop I mean... Ready. <laughs> I'm the table. You just want a no clip, right? I'm trying to think. That, I mean, I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't think of any specific examples, but there's always there's, been that there's, stuff in games. There's lots of little ones like that. Where, where like you said, like, like getting in the car is probably I, one of the one of the worst. Yeah, ones. that half second, whatever. I don't want to spend that half second. <laughs> it's just like waiting at stoplights in reality. It's just like I don't. I want that time back. It's just. It's a big waste of time. Man, there is a thing. I played a lot of Borderlands. Did you guys ever play Borderlands? No, yeah, I played a lot, lot of Borderlands. Man. man, there is a thing in Borderlands that will it drives me fucking insane, which is you you played it, right? Oh yeah. So you know, it's like it's kind of like this really cool hybrid of an FPS FPS and an MMO. Yeah. So like loot's a big deal. And you pick up shit loads of loot. And there's this weird I don't know why they made it this way. There's this weird thing where you hit X to pick up a weapon oh, yes. or you hold X and boy that is a small sliver of time between press and hold. If you hold X, then you pick up the weapon and arm it as your primary weapon. Uh, dude, I have screamed at that game so like, many times. Same time, like, why is it this thing dying? And you look at your inventory, like, why the when the fuck did I get this See, gun? Here's <laughs> the, here, here's the thing, like in in in, in L A N O R. If you walk up to a door and you want to go through the door, you just push forward. And the guy just does the door. Like you don't have to press X. See, I think that's a massive step forward in gaming. <laughs> where it's just like, let's not put a button on opening a door. Like that's not part of the gaming. Just go through the goddamn door. I walk up to the door, Joel push the forward, go the door. I don't need to push the button, right? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> see, right? Am I, so now we're down to actually you, your mechanic I, I of pushing it, the button. I want to make it as, as efficient as possible. You should start and using, save the buttons for real you gaming. You should start using connect. It's like door open. <laughs> you know, just start, just start talking to it's your... It's funny because like the whole world's getting into more activity. I'm trying to figure out a way to like make it even like, is there a way that we can like make pressing a button even easier? <laughs> the good thing about that game too is it tells you the doors you can go into. Like, they're gold knobs, right? It's not like Grand Theft Auto 4 where you're like, I'm going to visit a thousand of these buildings and see which ones I can actually go into. just saves you time. That, if, someone has a, if someone puts a gold door or a gold, uh, gold knob on their door. They do a great job in that game because it's sort of like if – they do a great job in that game because it's sort of like if you deal with the reality of what's going on in the game and it's sort of like, okay, you know, he was in one of the lockers. You need to check one of the lockers. Well, there's a light hanging over the locker that you need to check. So it's sort of – 
it makes sense. You well, know they they even do a thing where if like you fail something like three or four times, it just gives you the option to skip it, right? Yeah, if you fail like an action sequence. Yeah, right. That's See, cool. my problem I mean, not is that that to me. Man did that too. <laughs> my problem is that you'll go into a room and it's be like you need to check this spot, and it's like there's a spot, there's a light hitting the spot, but I'm like overly whatever, so it's like no, no, I gotta walk. And check every dark whatever corner of every from no where and it's just yeah. Well, I, you're a good detective. I gotta check every goddamn beer bottle because maybe that one, maybe that one out of a hundred will be relevant to the case. Kept, That's annoying. I kept wishing there would be a victim that wouldn't have any arms, so I wouldn't have to check them because it's just <laughs> like I don't. It's just like I don't. I, it's just a big waste of time. It's just but you have to check it. You know what would drive you guys crazy is if you played Fallout. Have you guys ever played Fallout oh, yeah. before? I mean, there's like twenty billion. Filing file cabinets that are left over in the post-apocalyptic world, and desks, and desks, and you know dressers and cabinets and just boxes. People leave boxes, metal box, <laughs> and it's just like there's so much stuff to check, and you, you'll drive yourself crazy. That's exactly it. That's exactly like I've learned a lot about myself. Where it's like, well, I have to check every little thing. Well, that's not going to work. That's not efficient. I it's wish, a big waste of time. You I know? wish there was a graph that could show me in Fallout. How diligent I was about opening all those boxes early in the game versus late in the game. I'm sure early in the game I was like, "Oh, yes, check another everything, box. check everything." And then as it goes on, it's like, "Fuck that box!" I, I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, there, and then there's that point in the middle where it's like, "Ah, uh, uh, I don't want to check the box, but I have to check the box." <laughs> and you know, there's that there's that thing in the middle where it's like, "If I don't check that box, that thing that I really need is going to be." The in worst the box. is when you're running out of ammo and you're like, "There might be ammo in the box. I got to check all the boxes." Right. And it's funny too because a lot of things. One of the things you can find in those boxes is a pilot light for a stove, and it's like making fun of you <laughs> for being OCD. It's like, oh, check the pilot light, essentially. This is your reward. Now you're like walking through the desert going, it's off, it's off, it's off. <laughs> it's terrible, dude. It preys on you. It really does. Especially when I'm early on in games, I don't realize the significance of the significance of things. Like MMOs, I don't play a lot of MMOs. But it's like, oh, you've got this. Oh, you you have a feather. And it's like, the feather is mean. The feather doesn't mean anything. But I don't know that. It's like, I'm going to hold on to this feather. This feather could be like the key to the whole thing. <laughs> Thank God no, for the not. internet. Yeah. And it's just like, now I have all this useless shit that I'm walking around mm-hmm. with. It's just... I, I, I agree. I, it's the exact same this, thing. This is like... You know, I just played the, uh, the Honest Hearts DLC for New Vegas, the Fallout New Vegas game. Oh, okay, yeah. And when you start that DLC, it before, like you go and you meet the people who are going to go take you to this like new area to do it. They're like, oh, there's a weight limit. You can't carry more than 75 pounds worth of stuff with you. To go to this new area, so you're like, fuck. fuck. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> going. <laughs> can you give it all to your companions? Like so you're, you're like, you're trying to load up your dog. You're trying to find a place to go stash all your shit so you oh. can find it later. And How does that it's work? Like, it's like, it's like here, a lot of these games, it's like you're a homeless, crazy person. Yes. <laughs> with like a shopping cart. With it's like, like yeah. no, 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 I need, I need the milk carton. You have pots hanging off you yeah. and things like that. Just, yeah. The, the, I was playing in New Vegas and I told myself, I'm not going to use any wikis. I'm not going to look online in any of the walkthroughs or anything like that. Until I found a stack of lottery tickets, and I carried those things around to like four towns. <laughs> like, there's no description on it. It's like, what the fuck are these lottery tickets? And I know I'm going to sell them to some jackass out in the middle of the wasteland, and then I'm going to show up somewhere. It's like, oh, do you want to win the game? Just give us your lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> fuck! Yeah, yeah. I gotta go find this guy with his two-headed bull out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> who's wandering around in the waste. I remember lottery playing tickets. Star Wars Galaxies, and I did not play a lot of that. I played it for like a month. But I remember, like, I just went to some f- weird planet. I just walking out in the middle of nowhere. And I found like this random like Jedi thing, like this statue, and just out in the middle of nowhere, I was like, "This is significant. This, there has to be some significance to this thing." But I got like super fixated on this thing that probably didn't. I probably need to be like twenty levels higher and go mm-hmm. on a quest and blah blah blah. But I don't know. A lot of wasted time. Yes. I, dealing with weight too. It's like um, I'm actually playing a hardcore mode. Oh God, Vegas, oh, Jesus Christ! Where you have to drink. Your character gets thirsty. Fuck that. It's like having a did, sim. Did you? I did, yeah. uh, did you by any chance? Uh, you didn't pre-order the game from GameStop, did you? I'm actually looking on. I say, <laughs> I say, no, I did not order. I did not pre-order the game from GameStop, and it comes with the classic pack. Yes. If you pre-ordered, and what do you get? You got you got uh, a game? weather ten for follow, Vegas. Oh, for Vegas. Yeah. You got uh, one of the things you got was uh, a weather ten millimeter pistol. And a Vault 13 Canteen. The Canteen is a big deal. The Canteen is a big deal for hardcore mode. Yep. Because you see them, you just carry around and like, t- it basically t- takes away the part of the game that hardcore mode puts in. Yeah, and, and, it just, and even if you're not playing on hardcore mode, you constantly get that notification. You take a sip from your trusty Vault 13 Canteen. And you're you fine. Take a sip and then you're fine. Wait, so see, that's awesome. From it? You, autom- you don't have to fucking worry about it. Oh, wow. You see, that's awesome. You drink from that's it. That's awesome. So, I, don't, I don't want my game so real that it's now become like real life. You know, you know I, wanna... I, also, I also played the Dead Money DLC recently. Yep. If, and if you're going to hard do that on hardcore mode, that's crazy. Because the entire time you're outside, there's like this cloud of gas that's constantly 
taking your health down. What? So anytime you step outside, you have to go through it as quickly as possible and find cover. Otherwise, your health is just slowly deteriorating. Like, but if you have one of those companions, they sa- they saved you through that, right? Like One, one of, the- of the companions will reduce your uh, the amount of damage you take from it, but... That's only for the concentrated pockets. There's still a oh, gradual okay. creep on hardcore mode that'll uh, that'll wear you down. So, yeah. how old a game is New Vegas as of the recording of this podcast? Came out um, last year. Yeah, like six months, let's say. A little old. It's more than that. Eight months, maybe. Eight months. On eBay, right now, you can buy the codes for people who kept the codes and didn't use them, and they're going for like fifteen, twenty bucks each. God, that's pretty wow. good. That's that that's that holds awesome. its value much better than the game itself does. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's pretty really, crazy. It's awesome. I Nineteen dollars, so buy it now. Yeah, God, they have a they have a. That's what really is funny. this? Fallout New Vegas Tribal Pack, very rare, hundred and forty nine dollars. Why? Would, I mean, what what is this? It's like oh. investing in video games. It's great. <laughs> it's like Bitcoin. Yeah, what's Bitcoin? Well, how, how do these How do these companies not just start selling the pre release or the the pre order DLC stuff? Like, I know they're doing that with a new Mortal Kombat game where. They had like different different retailers had different skins, and now they're selling the whole pack where you can get all the pre-order skins in one just quick shot. Like, why don't they do that for every single game? Like the, the whole pre-order DLC stuff really bugs me. It's like it's 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 frustrating. But like, why not after six months they just go okay now anyone can get it? You know, for four. Well, months. I, I like I like unique unique things or whatever, like unique paths, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's like... It's they do that sometimes. Left 4 Dead 2 is a good example where yeah. it, you got the baseball bat if you pre-ordered from GameStop, but then in like three weeks, I think everybody had the baseball bat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know? Well, that's, that's I mean, also like true. That, that, there's that's enough, fine. There's a variety going from game to game to game where that is the case for a lot of... Yeah. Where, yeah. For other there's players. also some where you unlock a weapon early. Like World at War had, you know, the M1 Garand you got yeah, a little right. earlier. And then the other way, you could just grind it out a few and levels. And it makes sense because different games are different. You know, and yeah. they're going to different like, logics. Like, exa- like, like I was saying, Mortal Kombat, they actually... There was a fatality... With the, like the classic skin for Scorpion, uh, and then you couldn't get that fatality unless you pre-ordered the DLC or pre-ordered it from uh, from GameStop. Yeah, but that doesn't affect gameplay. No, but it's it's an extra thing, and it's like and then it's then content. The, you know, but, it's on the game. But I, yeah, you know, it's on that disc. But right. I will say uh, that Mortal Kombat, they were one of the people that actually did sell that stuff, so you could later go out and buy it. But mm. you know, I, I'm I'm cool with that. Like, I don't mind that stuff. I don't mind the pre-order stuff as long as they eventually make it available. So. I mean, listen. I mean, it's it's a mark. It's obviously a business deal, right? It's a marketing yeah. thing. It's a retail person sitting in the room with a distributor saying, uh, "Yeah, I'll buy your game, but you got to help us out. You know, do well, something extra, and we'll buy that many more units." So I get that. Where I run into a problem with it is this: I'm 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 behind in games. I'm intentionally lagged on games because I'm playing New Vegas. I specifically didn't play New Vegas when it came out because there were so many reports of how buggy the game was. It was buggy. You had some major problems. I, that's, the only, that's the reason I waited so long to play the DLC till now was to try to make sure that some of that shit was resolved. Is it? No. Oh, God, really? No. <laughs> you, like, you had a thing where you'd open a door and it would take minutes? It would take between five to ten minutes to walk through a door. They fixed that. Wow, that's like... Well, that's good. That's... That, that's bad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Angel, he has to... A second and a half. Like, I would have to play the game, and I'd have my laptop with me, like, okay, door. All right, time to use the internet. Like, Is the door open? Nope, gonna keep using the internet. Okay, now we can go through the door. It's like classic PS1 moments. <laughs> it was worse, way worse. And Joel, the worst part is he had to press A before that five or ten minutes started. So that was the hard part, right? So labor intensive. You couldn't mm-hmm. just <laughs> you could just walk through the door and then wait five to ten minutes. No, they, they cut down the time. Now I only have to wait like two minutes to walk through a door. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, I don't... I'm, mine's great. I just walk through the door and... There we I know. Go. I, I loaded up Fallout 3 to see like maybe it was bad on Fallout 3. Maybe I'm just... You know, this problem's worse in my head. Fallout 3's fine. No problem going through doors. Fallout New Vegas? No, I'm saying on New Vegas, doors. I don't have this problem. I open a door and I go right through. Yeah, I never had that problem. I either. realize that I'm in the minority. No one talks about this problem like I do. I did something. Something happened in my game. Ga- where Gavin, doors are fucked up. I don't think you did this, but Gavin did something similar because Gavin got a thousand points in Oblivion or a hundred percent of the achievements in Oblivion, which I think is a ridiculously high level accomplishment in the achievement world, at least not in any other in, world. In Oblivion, yeah, in Oblivion, he got all that because Oblivion is just like a grind of death, but. Um, he did this thing where he found out about an exploit where you could get an item and then you could clone the item by dropping it in a certain way or something. I don't know exactly what it is. And to test it, he dropped like a bunch of these fruits, like these round fruits, like a melon or something. And he just cloned like a thousand of them. He's like, oh, this is great. Look what I can do. But then he couldn't get rid of them. And that region of Oblivion, he could never go near it because every time he got within like a mile of it, his frame rate started to die. So it took him that much longer to finish all the quests in that area. And then he, it was like this like plague area of his map where he go, I can never go back there. 
Like because, three mile was island. it like too many polygons? Like all those fruits on the screen or yeah, something? And because they were round, they were rolling. So oh it, was like, it, had, it had physics going on and it had to handle the actual object itself. And he had to clone like a thousand of these things. And so there was nothing he could do about it because he, he <laughs> fucked up the world. That's fucking hilarious. He broke the world. That's and uh, he had to finish the game with this weird region that he could never visit ever again. And he still thousand pointed it? I think 1250. Wow. What did it get up to? 1500 even? I don't know. Yeah, we got a th- he got 100% in it up to the point at which he was playing it. So, I can, you want me to ask him? No, the right future is wonderful. I can talk to him in England from So, here. he turned that region into slow-mo, guys, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, that's how it all started, right? The latest video they just put up was uh, Gavin was firing champagne corks was, into oh, Dan's face. Really funny. I still haven't seen that. Well, it's it's uh, that sounds it, so dangerous. It's it sounds so dangerous, but when you watch it, you don't come away saying, "Wow, that was really dangerous." You go come away saying, "Wow, that was really kind of perverted." Because sure, the cork hits him, but then it's Gavin holding <laughs> a champagne bottle at waist level while Dan is sitting in a chair and he's just spraying his face <laughs> with this foam out of this champagne bottle. It looks a little uh, racy, sure, a little awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure the internet has seen worse videos. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're in the UK. They're fine. It's exactly. <laughs> They're good. So, so well, you mentioned Bitcoin uh, crashing. What's going on there? I saw a headline about it, but I'm not sure what's going on. I'll, I'll defer to Joel on this. So this well, is I've a only, real world I've economic heard, thing. I've only heard a little about this, but Bitcoin is supposed to be like an online currency, sort of like PayPal or whatever. And the guy who created it, I guess, is keeping his identity unknown. They think he's English, mm-hmm. something like that. But That's what um, you want. You want a currency made by somebody who won't admit yeah, it. There's, there's a, like This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Like Every single danger sign in the world, it this has. Bitcoin has. You want and, me to read an official description sure, sure, here? Yeah. Bitcoin is a digital currency created in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto. The name refers to the open source software he designed to make use of the currency and to the peer-to-peer network formed by running that software. Bitcoin issues... Uh, central authorities and issuers using a distributed database spread across nodes of a peer-to-peer network to track transactions. Bitcoin uses digital signatures and proof of work to provide this all like horseshit. It's all, it's to all, provide yeah. basic security functions such as ensuring that bitcoins can only be spent once per owner and only by the person who owns them. So there's a, a digital lot, of, a lot of rules, so a lot of like there's a limited number of Synergy. bitcoins. So it was like a, a, a fake currency you could only use online. It sounds like WoW Gold. Yeah, you know, what but you then somebody tried it. to put in the real world, okay. right? It sounds like this guy's that's, a gold that's farmer, right? Right, and you know they're trying to make you know trying to make it legitimate, I think, and it's just not. It's brilliant though. You know, flash forward fifty years is what we're all going to be using. Well, it's like starting well, your own religion. Why don't you start your own currency, right? Why not? Uh, you know, you could. I mean, you could. I mean, but you people, know, the people government were did investing real dollars in this. <laughs> they were investing real dollars in this, and then they went crazy. But what wasn't this thing this weekend that happened? Somebody. <laughs> Hacked an account and just like started trading like and as crashed someone, the market. When soon as someone goes, oh, it's a digital currency. Your first thought has got to be, oh, well, what if it gets hacked somehow? And yeah. oh, look, it's happened. It's been Imagine hacked. That. I mean, it's like everything gets hacked. Yeah. I mean, it's like I can't. I don't know. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to trust it in any way whatsoever. Plus, the guy who who originated it, you don't know who it is. I mean, that's not going to work. How's that going to work? I mean, it's just like. Oh, we, he promises not to make more currency. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just taking his word. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, who would be stupid enough to like, oh, okay, I guess he's not going to create more currency for so himself. I guess they got hacked and the people who invested in it or who had Bitcoin are out a bunch of money now? They're out a bunch of Bitcoins. It's very simple. Bitcoins. <laughs> Don't buy Bitcoins. Well, Don't do that. Did you hear Don't, about Bitcoins? Like in all I, these I did. crazy I heard about weird it. I heard investment about blogs it. that you... Yeah, yeah, I did. I have. Was yeah. it on Mad Money? It a couple months ago, yeah. Was it on Mad Money? Was not on Mad Money. Did I tell you that, that yeah. Joel's the Joel's been trying to get me to this website? It's, I don't even know the name of the website. End so, of America. Yeah, whatever. some some yeah, we talked about great, this last week. Did, did we? we? Yeah. Did we, you, we, no, you we, weren't here. We've talked about it briefly. But yeah, so How you're crazy. Oh, okay. every, every time I walk into your office, I hear this this Alex no, no, Jones no, no, that sounding guy, guy, that guy on a podcast. No, no, it's funny because no, no. Alex Jones is the one promoting no, no, no. this yeah. website. No, no, no. And it's like, how can you have any credibility when you have Alex Jones promoting your website? People believe in it. You listen, dude. There's. There's a, there's a lot of people right now, especially in like the precious metals market. There's a lot of money to be made in cultivating a lack of confidence. If you can destroy yeah. confidence, you can make a lot of money. No right one, so no one is destroying commodity. lack of confidence faster than the Fed. I, no, okay. I agree. I agree. <laughs> no, no one is destroying confidence faster than government officials. It's oh, he's on the tipping point. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, well, tipping point. Before yeah, you get started, you, you, hey, didn't you see? I, I, I mentioned years ago. I mentioned years ago. I said go. you, oh, you go back. Christ. Okay. Uh, Before you get just, started, we need to take wait. a quick break, Joel. So just just save, save, save the crazy because we need to go. <laughs> There's nothing crazy about it. And we're back in just a minute.
So I have a story about snakes. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> no. <laughs> to the most professional run no, podcast. No, stop. I don't want to. I just want to make sure we stop him. So, I don't want him to go. No, it's over. Is it? Snakes. Snakes? Snakes. I, someone for me an article about uh, these <laughs> rattlesnakes <laughs> in like, the southern eastern United States of America. And they're like giant snakes now. Apparently what's been going on is they've learned to stop rattling. Because <laughs> so they don't give away their position anymore. They've figured this out. It's like a, they're not going to rattle anymore, and now they're finding these giant uh, so rattlesnakes. I got like, a picture. I'll show they you. went like, through millions of years of evolution to develop like, the rattle. Hey, wait a minute! Like, wait a minute! This has been working against us. <laughs> well, why would why would God do why would God do this to us? <laughs> <laughs> Why would he put this on the end of our tail? It makes no sense. Wait, where is this? Uh, I think it was like Georgia and I don't know, the southeastern United States. States that are dead to me now. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia. They're fucking... I'll don't show, I'll don't show, ever I'll, tell I'll Jeff so, that. I'll show you the picture. Is this it's real? Like, I'll show you a picture. I I, th- I don't know. It seems like it's real, but who knows? This fucking thing is fucking giant, dude. It's are fucking they in Alabama? gross. Probably in Alabama. Oh, man. Let's tell Jeff about it. That's awful. I mean, that's probably a good I, thing you, you, you mentioned this I've on seen, a podcast without Jeff. I've seen this listed in a bunch of different places. One is Urban <laughs> Legends, and one is Alex. studies on whether or yeah. One is Infowars.com. Yeah, there's <laughs> endofrattles.com. <laughs> Hosted end by of, Alex Jones. End of humans. <laughs> Wiki so links? a rattleless snake. Rattle. No, it has a rattle. They just don't. They rattle. don't use it. Yeah, they don't warn anymore. Well, it could be a thing where it's just... Now they have tasers. I'm going to make a bad comment here because obviously evolution takes a uh, much longer time. But it could be like yeah. an example of evolution in action where if they rattle, they get noticed and they get killed to the ones that don't rattle. That's true. Last longer. That's and then true. they have kids. And maybe we're just seeing a, a really big family, a generation of <laughs> unrattling snakes. I mean, you wouldn't say rattleless, so we'll say non-rattling <laughs> rattlesnakes. I um, hate snakes. <laughs> and so just like any story about snakes or whatever, I'm – Immediately fascinated in because really? I hate, hate them. Since I hate snakes, and I have to look at them and figure them out and figure all the stuff. My brother had a uh, like a, a fifteen foot Burmese python when we were younger. So this is going back to earlier. This is why you hate snakes, right? This this is probably why I hate. This is why I hate snakes. We had we had like a fifteen foot Burmese python. And we were chihuahua. watching like the Nature Channel one day, and like in South America, or whatever. And there was like this giant Burmese python. On the on the on the show, we were like it was swimming through the river, and it, you know how a snake looks swimming through a river. We're like wow, that looks really cool. Yeah. We wonder if our snake can do that. Oh God! So we grab the fifteen foot giant python, and we go to the local swimming pool, and we. Throw what do you it, mean? And we go to the swimming pool, <laughs> <laughs> and we throw, well, no one was around. How old were you? I think the YMCA. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so we threw mid-20s. it in the we threw it in the pool, and uh, sure enough, the dumb thing starts swimming around. We're like, hey, wow, look at that dumb thing starts swimming around. It takes a dump in the pool. The giant 15-foot Burmese <laughs> python takes a dump in the pool. And um, if, if you've never seen a snake take a dump, um, that's about the grossest thing you could possibly imagine. And uh, they only go to the bathroom like once every six months. Well, they don't eat very often, They right? don't eat very often, so they control their metabolism. It picks the moment when we throw it in the pool to take a dump. And I'm like, what's... I'm like, what's that? Is it is it leaking? Oh god, no! And my brother jumps in and grabs it. It was it was horrible. I have a million stories about that fucking snake. Well, how does that make how does that make you afraid of snakes? Yeah, what did you do with the what did you do with the snake poop? Technically, it was his snake. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw this happening, I was like, all bets are off. I'm out. And that was it. That was sure, it's fun but for everybody. I was like, snake yeah. pooped. But people get like, snake snake fears when they're attacked by snakes. You saw a snake taking a shit, and that. Now you have a huge fear? Dude, listen, like, all I'm saying is... Snake, that doesn't make snake, any sense. You see a snake take a... It's worse coming out than it is going in. Like, we had to feed the thing live rats all the time. Not nearly as horrible as watching it from the other end. So you could see a snake <laughs> devour an animal. Does that... Did, did kill something. Horrible. And it that's horrible. okay, but you see it take a shit, go, and all of a sudden, it's, it's the to, scariest it, thing in the world. To, we'd have to go to, like, the pet store, and, like, they'd have the rats, like, the messed up rats that were... You know, sold just to say, you know, to feed the snakes. You know, it's like the rat that's all mm-hmm. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> surplus rats. So, surplus rats. <laughs> so you, we take it into the garage, right? We take it into the garage, and we and you throw the snake on the floor, and you throw the rat on the floor, and the rat would run around in circles. And because it's only one side's like, working. Yeah, yeah. It was hor- it was horrible. It was horrible watching this poor. 
<laughs> messed up rat, and then the snake would it, it would eat the rat, and it was you know whatever, but not as bad as watching the snake. <laughs> Take it down. It's so funny because humans spend so much time worrying about what they're going to eat and analyzing the food, and it's like it's like uh, eat the surplus like crippled rat. <laughs> <laughs> the rat's fucked up. Snake doesn't give a shit. The snake's totally fine. No, yeah. So, so when this snake, snake <laughs> no. when this snake took a crab in the pool, he wants, he wants lost. <laughs> was, it, was it bones? He wants a lot. Well, again, it was just like, is that what? Ah! And then that was it. I was like, as soon as I put, you know, two and two together, out. I was done. Joel, I've seen enough. If you could was, put two and two together, you wouldn't take a fifteen foot <laughs> python down to the local pool we and young. throw it in. We were, that's what you do when you're young. You do dumb. How fucking. young were you? If I was young, I don't know. I don't know, thirteen or something like that. I mean, that's what you do when you're thirteen. Is you cause trouble. So how do you how do you take a python down to a pool? Did he like <clears throat> were you on a bike? Did you have a car? And we just carried it. I mean, did you put it in a pillowcase? He would take it. Uh, <laughs> he would take it on slithers all the time. You what? Know? It's like <laughs> what? Like the next door neighbor? No. The no. Next door neighbor would have like these little dogs or whatever, and uh, so he. I mean, he'd take the snake from slither, and like it would be sitting in the yard, and then the neighbor would come by with a dog, and immediately snake would be like. <laughs> And the dogs would be like, they weren't <laughs> sure, but they knew. And you'd see like the snake looking at the dog, and, and the owner d- wasn't aware that it was. There was a lot of stories. Do you have a leash when you take him out for yeah, the yeah. slither? <laughs> no, we should have got slither. one. <laughs> I've bad. never it, heard it used in that in that way. Because nobody takes snakes out in public. <laughs> they don't. They need their exercise. They put them around their neck and they go else. to a Renaissance fair yeah. and they, get, they he, join he, the drum he circle. He would lose it uh, sometimes too and be like, "Oh, we don't know where the snake like is." Like in the house? Yeah, Dude, in the house. I got like, it. Oh, I got it. like he, he like, lost it for a couple months actually. At one point. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, it found out that it was uh, inside um, one of the mattresses. It oh got inside one of them. I mean, those things will get anywhere. It's just like, that's like, you're living in a house and you're living on the edge because you don't know. Jeff would be on this table crying right now. As we, that. we had the same thing in the so house. So my ha- point is, is that this, the rattlesnakes, you see that picture. I'll give you the picture. Okay. Fucking horrible. At least that, at least the Burmese python is not venomous. I mean, it will bite you. But basically, if you're bigger than the snake, you're not going to die or anything. Yeah, until it squeezes the life out of you. Yeah, yeah. Every, right. every time you exhale, fucking... Yeah, as it's in your fucking mattress while you're sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> you're asleep and it's <laughs> oh, it's it's not poisonous. Don't Dude, there's worry. People, there's people out neck. there that have snakes. There's people out there that have Burmese pythons and will like sleep with them and stuff. Yes, people don't do that. Yeah, it's, it's like people it's, who raise tigers. Yeah, don't do don't do that. I mean, we go down a, a path here where it's like people who live with dogs that are just known for killing people. Yeah, no, and it's like that. it's like. It's like they always say, "Oh, it's the, it's not the dog; it's the owners." It's until their fucking dog goes nuts and bites the shit out of them, and then they're like, "These fucking dogs are crazy." <laughs> There's an article in the Onion about this where it's like pet snake eats. It's funny. Did you? Do you I had a cable guy who told who told me when he came to install cable, he said about a dog. He said he hears two things twice a week. He hears. <clears throat> Don't worry, my dog will never doesn't bite anybody. He's a really nice dog. And then about twenty minutes later, he hears that is the first time that dog <laughs> has ever bitten anybody. So just put away your goddamn dog. Do you remember the woman who got attacked by the chimpanzee? Yeah. I do. Oh, yeah, God. there was a recent story about her. She got a face transplant. Yeah, she got her face ripped off by the monkey. Right. They're they're not nice animals. Uh, yeah, there was a guy in California who was attacked by a bunch of chimpanzees, and he was. You know, royally fucked up. They tore off um, his genitals. Oh. I'm gonna come back to the chase on that. And, 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 uh, and not just, and not just, that. yeah. I mean, not, I mean, fucked them all up. You know, and just like that's. I, I think I'd rather have a snake than a chimpanzee. If if you, I mean, a chimpanzee is like. If you want to live with big wild animals that kill people, then go live with them. Yeah, don't, don't live don't, with people. I agree. Don't no, live with people yeah, and no. then have the tiger. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. You're not that fucking cool, right? Nobody's nobody's a, that cool. There's a thing that I linked to you one time about a guy that had a lynx. You know, a lynx is not. It wasn't that big, but mm-hmm. it was pretty pretty big. And it it's was still just, a cat. It does like a yeah. It does a this, house cat will fuck you up? It does this <laughs> growl. No, I can take a cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, can, can you take an orangutan? What's that? Uh, can you take an orangutan? I, yeah, I can fight any animal. <laughs> I really, I mean that. I mean seriously, I'm not scared of any animal. I got a brain. Maybe, maybe I, one. Maybe one animal. What's like, that? If you get like a pack of chimpanzees, you're oh good. no no no, that's no, no, just no numbers. That's, just, yeah. just he's just trying to be entertaining. No, any little animal, like I think maybe we could take a squirrel. Anything <laughs> other than that, we're fu- I mean, you're fucked. I'm not going. A house like, cat will fuck you up. They mono will, oh, mono with a silverback gorilla. I mean, if I but if like, I see it coming, I can get something. I can take that. If I had gorilla. a gat, <laughs> you have a Gatling gun. Maybe. I'll get a stick. <laughs> I'm serious. Did you ever see no. the episode of Star Trek where we made fucking gunpowder and shot the lizard dude? Come on. <laughs> 
I can do that. Absolutely. Have you seen the the preview, the new Planet I mean, of the Apes? Like Twelve the main, hours. The main a day. reason is I never want to end up in a scenario where this is tested, and you're putting yourself into a position where now there's going to be some something's going to happen. A fan is going to show up. Maybe a Comic Con, and somebody's going to like open a cage. Here I, I, brought, I brought Chuck the chimpanzee who likes to fight. Let's go. Trust me, he doesn't rip junk off. You'll be okay. <laughs> there's be like, there's be like Twenty internet videos of you fighting Chuck the chimpanzee. For. That's, that's, it's gonna be all over the internet. It's gonna be you know, all these videos. It's gonna be terrible. Why would you set yourself up for that? That's the first time he tore off anyone's genitals ever. I promise. So sorry. He was always such a gentle gorilla. Until You'll he enjoy you. wearing the dresses later. Did you provoke him? It's like no, he's a fucking gorilla. God, fucking. Oh. So by the way, now I just want you to know because of your story. Now for the rest of my life, in my history on my internet, it's gonna be. Me looking up snake poop images. Nice. And that's that, what snake poop looks like. That looks like an owl pellet. Oh, God. It's just like animal parts, basically. Yeah. Did, you guys leave it, did you guys leave it in the pool? No, my brother jumped in there and grabbed I mean, no, no, you grabbed the, the snake, poop, the poop. Oh, oh uh, I, don't, I don't. Again, I was out. They got filters for that. I was out. It's like the whole they they left it there, and then like the pool people had to call in an expert. They're like, what did this? Oh, a 15-foot python? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, was there a when? lifeguard there? I mean, no, the, no, no, it was like, no, 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 it was like. No one was there. This is an unattended pool, unattended pool in the middle of a Dallas suburban neighborhood. Was it Dallas where you were living uh, at that point? Yeah, I don't even know if I want to comment. Okay. <laughs> Bernie, do you have a community pool? What's that? Do you have a community pool? Yes, and it is snake I guess all free. Those, all those no, people 400 days who are so bravado about going to the community pool. I'm just saying, you don't know. You just went to a pool. Could be. It was probably, the, it was probably like the local reservoir. The water supply is dropping snakes into it. Yeah. You know, I heard a story that uh, I guess it was somewhere in Oregon. Uh, some they had video of the reservoir where Tom gets his drinking water from, it, and they had video of a guy peeing into the reservoir. So they drained like eight million gallons of drinking water and refilled it. Because, That's so stupid. Because one but, guy peed in the drinking but, water. You know, like the same reservoir, they found animals floating in there, and they never drained it for this. Yeah. It's like I, that's that to me is more. But you know what? That's um. I pissing. bet that's every reservoir. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, the water comes from the ground, it filters through like animal shit on the ground. Like all that, any, any natural water is just full of animals. You shit. can drink pee. I mean. It's sterile. Bear gorillas. Yeah. You bear and if, you're, if you're in a fucking reservoir, I mean, that's like how many parts per yeah, gallon? Yeah. Like how many parts per million urine to water is that? People are uptight about that stuff. I mean, you know. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting around drinking pee or anything like that. But, like, people see a bug in a restaurant. It's like, get, there's fucking bugs in life. Get over it, dude. Yeah. It's not like the bugs are in there making I do, your hamburger. I do like to live in a fan because you don't want to think about that you know what i mean it's like there's there's no there's no if and buts about it if you've lived at some point in your life you've accidentally eaten something you can you eat know, the bug yeah, yeah i mean it's just it's, it's happened i'm gonna you know? say something, just, something kind of gross what's that saturday night i was uh, in my house and i walked into my dining room because i was gonna get a beer starting to lean and uh <laughs> like i turned on the light i grabbed a beer out of the the fridge i was gonna turn the light off and i looked on the wall over by where the dog's food is and there was a there's a big roach on the wall i thought wow that's a giant roach it looks kind of weird so I got up closer to it. And I was like, "Is it? Is there another roach under it? No, it had picked up my dog's dog food and was holding it on the wall oh and my eating it. God, and I was like, ass. what the <laughs> fuck is this thing doing? God. So I got a shoe and I killed it. You know, of course, guts go everywhere. It was filled with dog food. Oh, like, so <laughs> gross. And so like dog food. Dige- partially digested roach dog food was like smeared all over the wall. At any point in this encounter with the roach, did you think to yourself, I gotta get this roach and take it to a pool? At any point did you <laughs> no, think that? No. They see, gotta see what, what happens. a rational person see does. See what, the, see what the actual... It sees an awful animal in its house and it fucking kills it with a shoe. Well, when you're 13, you know. You want to so, do there's a couple of things. It's just one of the story of animals, too. Uh, I want to talk to you about this mm-hmm. thing that I saw on Reddit. Do you ever see those? Never seen it. But first of all, I want to talk about this, this thing about the snake that got out. The house that I lived in in college, we had a bunch of people there, and we had announcements at our meeting. We had, like, a weekly house meeting. And you stand up and make announcements. Well, fucking this guy, Paul, he stands up. There's already been, like, five or six announcements, all right? And he goes, he goes, oh, hey, uh, I forgot to mention, um, my tarantula. <laughs> <laughs> my tarantula got out. He's been out for, like, four days, so if you see him, just let me know. Everybody's like, <laughs> You talking about? Why would this be the first announcement of the meeting? And why did you wait until the meeting to tell us that? And that, that there was a tarantula loose in our house for a month, and we finally found it on the wall in the kitchen. And so that was that was the end of Paul's tarantula. Because somebody got a spatula. Oh, somebody killed it. Yeah, somebody killed it with a spatula. <laughs> if I'm going after a tarantula, I'm going with more than a spatula. I'm telling you right yeah. now. Oh my god! I mean, what, what, how do you say that to somebody with a straight face? It's like, yeah, I lost my rabid pit bull somewhere in this room. 
<laughs> but like four days ago, so it's probably somewhere by now. Okay, but here, here's this thing. This is, I'm going to show you a picture of it, and go, oh Gus will post the link to it. That is a wasp that's in Austin. That's what? That's bigger than the actual thing. God, it looks just like a hand. What does that mean, that's bigger than the actual thing? That's the thing. I think that's a model. Tarantula hawks aren't that big. Oh. <laughs> I have them in my yard. Why would they do that? I don't know. Why would they make a model? No, they get that big. The other, that's the thing. Hold on one second. Let the me, ones in my yard are me, like this big. <clears throat> you don't think they can get bigger? Not that big. Uh, I, for your, for our sake, I hope not. For reference, it's sitting on a guy's hand. It's like this big. It looks like... Looks it's, like all, it's bigger than the guy's hand. But uh, the ones I've seen are, are smaller. They're you know, between an inch and two in length. You saw the picture I put up a couple weeks ago, right? That thing was like the size of my hand. That was a spider, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a, a tarantula hawk. It's like a wasp. Tarantula oh, hawk. What? It's, it it's a wasp. It's called a tarantula hawk. That Supposedly, it has the most painful sting. I, read any it. I got the quote right what here. Do you mean, what do you mean the most painful sting? I'm going to read it. Let me read you this. About the sting. The tarantula hawk is relatively docile. <laughs> it never stings anybody. <laughs> and rarely stings without provocation. <laughs> However, the sting... But what counts as provocation to an animal? Uh, You're a human uh, and near it. All yeah. right. Uh. However, the sting, particularly of Pepsis formosa, is among the most painful of any insect. Though the intense pain only lasts for about three minutes, commenting on his own experience, one researcher <laughs> one researcher described it the pain as immediate excruciating pain that simply shuts down one's ability to do anything except perhaps scream. <laughs> <laughs> researchers, <laughs> mental discipline simply does not work in these situations. <laughs> so it's basically you get stung and you scream. <laughs> <laughs> I would call that the the banshee wasp, yeah. not the. So why is it, it's called a tarantula because it it kills tarantulas. It kills and lays eggs in tarantulas. Yes. So it can yeah, only exist damn. in places where tarantulas exist. The only okay. reason I know what those are is one time I was walking my dog and he yep. stepped on one, and it stung him uh, and it flew off and I was like, what the fuck was that? And I and then I, I looked it up and I, I saw that's what they are. He screamed for three minutes. He didn't scream. He, he screamed once and it was like, nah, fuck it. He just kind of limped for a bit, um, but. Yeah, that's the only reason I know what those are, and they're all over my fucking yard. And, and it kills tarantulas and lays their eggs right. in them? Right, that's why they're only found in places where tarantulas live. That's part of its life cycle, is it lays eggs in tarantulas. So, so Gus's house is full of tarantulas, what you're That's what say. I've learned. So yeah, if you, you see, could live in my you college house's one, kitchen, apparently, on the wall. That's <laughs> if where you I, see that, that means there's probably tarantulas in the surrounding area. Please, right. From, from, the, from that conversation, please no one assume that Gus has a manly dog. Gus has a Shih Tzu. Yeah, it's a tiny, like tiny a, little dog. It's like a... How, how he has a Shih Tzu? walking what? that off. He has a Shih Tzu with bangs. Why? I, mean, <laughs> like, I don't know what and, else you could do to that and dog. And sunglasses. You've seen his new sunglasses? Yeah. Uh, and he has like... Is your wife still collecting the mini furniture? No, she doesn't collect that anymore. Like he had a little mini couch, like a miniature. He has, he the, has a mini the, bed. Hopefully the tarantula is... Me lounging out. But he, <laughs> he walked it off, right? How, it how off. do they know? Like, it won't lay eggs in anything out, like a dead bird or anything like that. It's like it has to be a tarantula. Why a tarantula? It's just part it, of the it, life cycle. He's got a fetish. No <laughs> judge. That's the way it works, man. <laughs> how does it know? He's got to get it on with a tarantula. <laughs> like, like, know. You know, I mean, animals are like that. Like, I think tapeworms. That's like part of the tra- tapeworms. Are like two animals, and part of it lives in pigs, and part of it lives in people. Does that make sense? It's like that's the two different life cycles sure, of, a, of sure. a tapeworm. <laughs> and there's some things that only live in certain animals. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like that's the only exists like that. I mean, you read about like some of those parasites. It's just like it reads like the bio of the aliens from Alien. Yeah, did you read that one? The the oatmeal made a comic about one that was um, it like it's a parasite that takes over an ant. Like yep. And then it controls the ant like a zombie. It makes it act like an ant. Then at night, it makes the ant go up and crawl on pieces of grass, hoping that a cow will eat it, so that it can then be live in the cow what instead of in the ant. The f- Fuck! Jesus Does Christ. it takes the the parasite takes control of the host? What's the name of the parasite? I, it was some really long name. I'll, I'll link it in the Holy link dump and show you. Fuck, dude! It was super. Cre- and then the, the the drawings, the the guy, the way the guy from the oatmeal draws, it made it like super cute. And but it was just like super creepy. It, it, and weird. I almost want to say this is a fungus. Am I? Right, I know what you're talking about, but no, it was some kind of parasite. Suddenly, worm. you don't think that the humans are at the top of the uh, look at this food <laughs> chain. <It's> <laughs> 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 Let's see. Uh, Google, uh, Google sort of type in ant zombie, and up comes ant zombie virus, ant zombie fungus. So maybe there's two. There's two. Oh uh, god. Does one live inside the other? Yeah, and then the other thing it does too is after the ant gets up, it like tries to get it up in the sun where it dries out too, and then it like sprouts a spore oh. on the top oh, are you kidding me? of the ant's head. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Well, I mean, what's going on with that with an ant? Right? I mean, an ant is almost like 
a, a mechanism. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on inside of an ant. Where it's yeah, just like, but I have you ever seen him swim? Because that's awesome. You should try that sometime. As long as it doesn't poop. Yes. <laughs> All right. Unfortunately, we got to wrap this up. Despite how fascinating it's been. Unfortunately. I, 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 Joel, I, I can't some, believe I've I, known you for so long and I've never heard these snake stories before. I got a bunch of them. All right. Well, I hope I'll it's not you, a I'll repressed tell, memory. You. It was like a lifeguard was just a really big dick. I'll or something. You <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope we get to hear more of them in future podcasts. We get the turkey story. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye, everybody. Later.